Hello student, today I will explain you allocation in distributed database design. As you all know, what is allocation? Allocation means deciding where to locate data. And how to allocate data? The allocation strategies is Number one, centralized data allocations means entire database is stored at one site. The second way is partition data allocations means database is divided into several disjointed parts that is also called fragments and stored at several sites. And the third one is replicated data allocation. That means copies of one or more database fragment are stored at several sites. So we can allocate data in three different ways. That is centralized data allocation, partition data allocation, and replicated data allocations. Data distribution over a computer network is achieved through data partition, data applications, or a combination of both. Now, allocation problem, where problem arise? Here, we are discussing here fragment allocation problems. Assume that there are a set of fragments f equal to f1, f2, dot dot fn, this is fine, and a network consisting of site s, which is denoted with s, which is uh, equal to s1, s2, dot dot sn, on which a set of applications q, which is denoted with q, equal to q1, q2, dot dot qq, is running. So here we are taking three th things, fragments, F, site S, and application with Q. The allocation problem involving finding the optimal distribution of F to S. One of the most, is most important issues that need to be discussed in the definition of optimity, opti the optimality can be defined with respect to two measures. Number one, minimal cost. The cost function consists of the cost of storing each FI at a site SJ. The cost of querying FJ at site SJ. The cost of updating FT at all sites where it is stored and the cost of data communications. The allocation problem then attempt to find an allocation scheme that minimizes a combined cost functions. And the second one is performance. The allocation strategy is designed to maintain a performance matrix. So two well known one are to minimize the response time and to maximize the system throughput at each site. And one thing is also constraint per site constraint, storage and processing. Now, information requirements, that is required information. It is at the, at the allocation stage that we need to that we need the quantitative data about the database the application that run on it the communication network the processing capaci capabilities and the storage limitation of each site on the network so We will discuss one by one in required information. The first one is database information. To perform horizontal fragmentation, we define the selectivity, 
equity of mean terms. We now need to extend the that definition to fragment and definition and define the selectivity of a fragments fj with respect to query qi. This is the number of tuple of fj that need to be accessed in order to process qi. This value will be denoted as silly bracket me fj. Another piece of necessary information on the database fragment is their size. So here two things must be uh, noted, selectivity of fragment and size of uh, fragments. The second point is application informations. Most of the application related information is already compiled during the fragmentation activity, but a few more are required by the application by uh, the allocation map models. The two important measures are the number of read access that a query QI make to uh, a fragment FJ during the executions which is denoted with R double R IJ and its counterpart for the update access UR IJ. This may for example, count the number of blocks accesses required by the query. We also need to define two matrices UM and RM with elements UIJ and RIJ respectively, which are simply specified as follow. UIJ, if, if it uh, become 1, then if query QI update the fragment FJ, it becomes 0 otherwise. RIJ, equal to 1 if query QI retrieve from fragments FJ otherwise 0. So the sec third point is site information. For each computer site we need to know about its storage and processing capacity. Obviously these value can be computed by means of elaborate function or by simple estimates. The unit cost of storing data at site SK will be denoted as U S C K. There is also a need to specify a cost measure LPC as a cost of processing one unit of work at site SK. The work unit should be identical to that of the R, R and U R measures. It gives the site information. Network information. In our model, we assume the existence of simple network where the cost of communication is defined in terms of one frame of data. Thus QIJ denotes the communication cost per frame between site SI and SJ. It communicates communication cost frame between two sites and the second one is frame size. To enable the calculation of the number of measures we use f size as the size in byte of one frame. There is no question that there are more elaborate network model which take into consideration the channel capacity, distance between site, protocol overhead and so on. Now, allocation models. We discuss an allocation model that attempt to minimize the total cost of processing and storage while trying to meet certain response time restrictions. The model we use has the following forms, mean bracket mean total cost, subject to response time constraint, storage constraint, processing constraint. In the remainder of the section expanded the component of this model based on the information requirement. So it uh, subject to response time constraint, storage constraint and processing constraint. Decision variables x i, the decision variable x i j which is denoted with this if x i 1 if fragment f i is stored at site otherwise zero. 
total cost the total cost function has two component query processing and storage thus it can be expressed as to as with this formula here qpc is the query processing cost of application qi as to see jk is the cost of storing fragment fj at site sk the query processing cost is more difficult to specify most model of the file allocation problem of FAP separate it into two component the retrieval only processing cost and the update processing cost. We choose a different approach in our model of the database allocation problem DAP and specify it as consisting of the processing cost PC and the trans mission cost TC, thus the query pro processing cost QPC for the application QI is QPC equal to PC plus TC. In this way we can find the cross query processing cost. Now the processing cost, processing, uh, the processing component PC consists of three cost factor. The, the access cost AC, the integrity enforcement cost IE and the concurrency control cost CC. So PC equal to AC plus AIE plus CC. The detailed specification of each of these cost factor depends on the algorithm used to accomplish this task. However, to, to demonstrate the point, we specify AC in some detail. Integrity and, and concurrency cost, it can be simply, uh, similarly computed through depends on the specific constraint. Now the transmission cost. The transmission cost function can be formulated along the line of access cost functions. It is compute, composed of two components, cost of processing update TCU and cost of processing retrievals. So we can write here TC equal to TCU plus TCR. Cost update, it, it inform all the site that have replicas plus a short confirmations message back which is denoted with this formula. Retrieval cost, send retrieval request to all site that have a copy of fragment that are needed plus sending back the result from these site to the ori origin entity. The retrieval cost can be specified as cost can be specified with this. Here the constraint. The constraint function can be specified in similar detail. However, instead of describing this function in depth, we will simply indicate what they should look like. The response time constraint should be specified as execution time of QI less than maximum response time of QJ with the with this formula. Pro preferably the cost measure in the objective function should be specified in terms of time as it makes the specification of the execution time constraint relatively straightforward. The stor storage constraint is denoted with this formula which is given here whereas the processing constraint for the site is given with this formula. You can use this formula also. So with the help of these all constraint and all terms this, compl uh, the, this complete our development of allocation models. Now the last topic of this allocation, solution methods. In solution model, the complexity of this allocation model problem is NP complete. Correspondence between the allocation problem and similar problem in other areas also. So plant location problems in operation research. Knapsack problem, network flow problems. 
hence solution from this area can be reused so here we use different heuristic to reduce the research to reduce the search space the test of goodness in this case is obviously how close the result of the heuristic algorithm are to the optimal allocations the heuristic development by operation research have commonly been adopted to solve the fap and dap problem there have been other attempt to reduce the complexity of the problem one strategy has been to assume, to assume that all the candidate partitioning have been determined together with their associated cost and benefit in terms of query processing the problem then is modeled so as to choose the optimal partitioning and placement for each re relations another simplification frequency employed is to ignore replication at first and find the optimal non replicated solutions replication is handled at the second step by applying a greedy algorithm which start with the non replicated solution as the initial feasible solution and tries to improve upon it for these heuristic however there is not enough data to determine how close the result are to the optimal so these are the solution methods i hope you all understand thank you for watching my video lecture thank you